What about the systemic disease? Well, like the skin, systemic disease can spontaneously disappear as well. And if you look at the literature, even in the central nervous system, there are a number of case reports where they gave treatment and responded a little, then stayed and responded, and then disappeared by itself. So did the treatment do anything? Who knows? But, but nonetheless, I would treat CNS disease, I think. I, I'm not sure that I would watch that. But, but it can spontaneously regress. So even in systemic disease, observation is reasonable in some cases, maybe most of the cases. So how do you know when to treat? Well, it's, it's a difficult question. It's, I think, again, clinical judgment. And I think that's what people need in this case. So... Obviously, if it's causing dysfunction of an organ, bone marrow, liver, lung, then it needs treatment. I think that's very clear. Maybe if it's developing rapidly, you want to treat it before it gets too bad. And possibly if there's a very widespread disease, you want to treat it. So maybe those are some guidelines. Apart from that, I think you just have to use clinical judgment. The patients that have died, the very small number that are described in the childhood population have had either CNS disease or liver disease. So I would tend to treat those, but you know, it, even that may be a little bit debatable. It is generally a benign disease. This is not in any way, shape or form a malignant disease. If you treat, mostly what's described is LCH type therapy, so vindlastine prednisone, which I think everybody's very familiar with. In the eye or the central nervous system, sometimes radiation is used. I would try other things first. That to me is always tends to be a bit of a last resort type therapy in the young child. And then other things, and I've said this about other um, un uh, uh, uncommon disorders, Generally speaking, you have to use trial and error. And it seems to me, looking at the literature, hearing about cases, reading about it over the years, that what works in one patient may not work in somebody else. And eventually, you may, you know, you have to try different things. I mean, you start with the same things. If that doesn't work, you go on to something else. And then eventually, usually, hopefully, you'll find something that does work. So there's a well-described case where de dexamethasone Zone, which is just another um, steroid, more, perhaps more potent, worked where prednisone didn't. didn't. The 2-CDA that you heard about for salvage for LCH has been shown to work in a number of cases. Um, methotrexate combinations, VP16, interferon, all of these things have worked and been described in some patients and have worked in some. So I think this is the way to go if the first line doesn't work, and that's probably true for most of the disorders. So to summarize juvenile xanthogranuloma, it's an uncommon condition but is the commonest of the uncommon histiocytic disorders. The majority are just simply solitary skin lesions that can be observed. Systemic disease in a small percentage that in some patients can cause serious morbidity and rarely even <coughs> mortality. The therapy starts with LCH type therapy and if there's poor response um, then generally trial and error is, is what, you, what you need. Um, just a, a brief word about the adults, um, usually single, this is the typical age. The pathology is exactly the same always on the head and neck. None have been observed in the lower extremity, but the difference is these do not go away spontaneously and they do need surgical excision in the adult. Why, that ha why that's true is, 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 is not clear, but I think what is clear as you look at the spectrum of uncommon histiocytic disorders, when you start with a young patient to the very old, the response to therapy does get worse and worse and the problems do get larger as you move from from um, you know from the young patient to the very old even though the cell itself can look exactly the same pathologically um, before I go on are there any questions about juvenile xanthogranuloma anybody who has a family member or no they always look the same no, no, not really, because you, you saw even on those pictures there was a difference. Um, so they don't necessarily always look the same. They have a very classic pathology, though, which I didn't show, um, you know, in which they can be diagnosed. Um, so, it, it, you know, the diagnosis is usually made on biopsy, like with, like with most things. 
sorry. Dr. Mm. Well, Dr. Whitlock is going to discuss Rosa Dorfman. Is that what you, is, did you want to ask something before that, or did you want to? Uh, my concern is how, how we know it's just going to go away. That's what I don't understand. The going away part. Yeah. What yeah. bothers me? How sure. long do it take? Yeah, you know, the, that's the problem. I mean, it can take, uh, it can take years. It can take a few years, um, and this, it can come and go, and then eventually disappear. But I think the history of both of these conditions is that you just have to be patient, and mostly it will eventually go away without causing problems. You know, um, so that's you know you, you don't know for an, an individual patient when it's going to go away. It's just their appearance. I mean, um, yeah, you just can't sit and do nothing. Um, I mean, I've been told, just don't nothing. I can't. Uh, not well, you know, nothing. but you've got to think about who you're treating. Are you treating you or the patient? Seriously, I, I'm, I'm being quite serious about it. You've got to, you've got to decide, you know. Yes. I mean, and if it worries him, you know, that's, yes. that's a different thing, you know. I think, yeah, I mean, it's a very difficult issue. It's, it's tough to deal with. I mean, it's, you're the parent, you're the one who has to be with him. You know what he feels like, you know. So uh, it's part of the treatment decision is, has to be a dual one about when to treat, you know. I think because part of it is medical. If it's causing a medical problem, you have to treat. If you don't have to, then there may be other reasons to treat. But in general, these conditions, for the most part, but not all of them, for the most part, will go away when the body's immune system, for whatever reason, decides to kick in. And the other thing I think you've got to at least think about in your own mind is you don't want to do anything that will interfere with that either, if you know what I mean. So, And most of the drugs we use are immu immune suppressant drugs. We, that's why we're using them. So you've got to weigh this up in the balance of what you do or don't do in, in these conditions. Yeah. It's it's tough though. I mean, it's it's easy to be the the person standing back and saying, you know, don't do anything. You've got to live with it, and you've got to be part of the decision making process, for sure. But but you've got to think about why, why are you treating. <laughs>